Welcome to the topic where we look at physiotherapy and physiotherapy approaches to pain management. This is something that I never got my head around until I started spending some time with a local physiotherapist because they're always in their office or in their um, clinic uh, doing magical things to our patients and getting them moving and um, dealing with the psychological aspect as well because we all have different roles but physiotherapy doesn't only mean um, physical, uh, physical therapy. So the idea of this topic was to get across to you what the important aspects are of um, what happens when patients go to physiotherapists, when to send patients to physiotherapists, and a couple of the, a couple of the important um, uh, aspects to be aware of. So this is the way we're going to discuss or uh, structure the topic. Physical activity, chronic pain, when to when to refer to physiotherapists, when to talk and think about physiotherapists, um, what are the effects of an increased physical activity, going to briefly spend some time on the boom-bust cycle of inactivity which I and we see a lot of, the assessment of these patients and then what various techniques are available to increase physical activity particularly pacing. So physical activity and pain. Previously we've looked at or healthcare has looked at um, a unidimensional or two-dimensional um, uh, has had a two-dimensional or unidimensional approach to pain management and it's changing it's not it's it, it's not gonna work and it's 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 changing rapidly so we're moving away from unidimensional and we're moving away to a multi-dimensional approach to therapy and this is not only for pain management this is this is um, for all forms of, of health care so for example patients now are moving away from being passive to really need to become active in their in their own um, rehabilitation recovery care and this is the trick how do we get patients to now become active in their management um, and this equates to uh, seeing patients now not from a sickness model of care but in a from a wellness model of care so we're talking um, about um, examples like enhanced recovery after surgery we're really focusing patients on getting back to re rehabilitating themselves quickly and um, reducing that dip that they get following a stress so the same thing should and does apply to pain management talk to them as if they're well talk to them as if um, this is where we're going this is what you're going to be like get them from being passive give me a tablet, give me an injection, to really taking charge of their management and this is the trick. So when are you going to refer patients to a physiotherapist or when are you going to think about it? Well they're really um, uh, common sense things but I've put it on paper so it's easy to have a handle on. So when patients are deconditioned, they're physically deconditioned which we'll talk about shortly. When they're not doing much activity, when they're just not getting out and not moving their body enough when they don't have any energy or they're intolerant to physical activity I can't do this doc I, I'm just I'm too tired I'm, I'm, I'm in too much pain and when you examine your patients they may have stiff joints really reduced range of movement um, and also co contracted kind of um, limbs and postures fear avoidance behavior you'll see that when they come in when you examine them they're really fearful for um, doing various things and that leads them to avoid doing those various things. Boom busts uh, physical activity which we'll mention uh, in a short while and if they're completely or severely incapacitated they're just not, um, they've got a long way to go get the physios, get the psychologists involved early and then again like with physiotherapy if a patient comes in and knocks on your door and says um, I want to get better uh, they may be ready for self-management, they may be ready for physio and psychology, so get them there quickly. The effects of increased physical activity, we all know this. Um, there are um, uh, improvements in the patient's well-being, so the depression gets better, the, the anxiety gets better, their mood gets better. Um, the analgesia gets better as well, and if you'll have some references to papers where uh, it's been shown that beta endorphin release has increased and various other things. An interesting couple of recent papers looking at neuropathic pain and exercise. Um, I've 
found a couple which are referenced and they are more to animal models but they're there exercise can reduce neuropathic pain and then all the benefits of physical activity in general weight control muscle bone joint strength and then reducing the risks of diabetes high blood pressure and the aims of physical activity and this is important now you're going to send your patient to physical activity well what are, what are they going to get out of it well, why are you sending them for physiotherapy for physical activity you've got this already um, you've got this in a previous handouts uh, the physical approach to these patients so again you're going to stop them from getting worse so reduce the deconditioning fear avoidance kinesiophobia you're going to desensitize them and then you're going to reactivate them as well and eventually aiming for self-management so you've got that already and this is just a slightly more detailed explanation of that so you're going to set goals you're going to reduce the deconditioning you're going to change those maladaptive behaviors again part of um, cognitive behavioral therapy so physical therapy psychotherapy they all um, they all merge so change those maladaptive behaviors desensitize them so take away the tension give them relaxation and then activate them again stretch stretch flexibility range of movement strength endurance and coordination those are the main aspects of reactivation and then promoting all the good stuff so the positive behaviors getting them exercising and getting them looking after themselves and of course their psychological aims as well with physiotherapy confidence self-efficacy locus of control all the same things we've mentioned before reduce the catastrophizing and increase in the coping so the boom bust physical activity or the boom bust physical inactivity should I say um, what is it it's simple overactivity pain rest so they really get up they do too much too quickly for too long what that leads to is a greatly increased um, uh, severity of pain and the effects of that it completely flattens patients for days on end so it's really not what they should be doing so that's boom bust physical inactivity no they shouldn't be doing this that leads to a fear avoidance so there's a scared little man and that leads to him avoiding various aspects and various activities so it positively reinforces uh, the lack of activity it's a completely wrong situation for these patients to be in and what, what that leads to is a downward spiral of inactivity so pain don't do anything less active more become deconditioned more pain milder efforts and eventually they spiraling downwards and the aim really is to stop the spiral and then get them out of it so deconditioning good question um, it's complex it's physiological it's psychological and it follows a period of inactivity whether that be bed rest or just a long lifestyle where they don't do do much and that leads to multiple declines in multiple aspects of um, patients lifestyles and the consequences of deconditioning uh, you might get asked this uh, you might need to explain this to somebody biological psychological and social consequences and the biological ones are the important ones uh, not more important but they're important so strength, uh, strength goes down flexibility they don't have an aerobic capacity muscle size changes calcium bone strength osteoporosis and the list goes on so inactivity is bad and a lot of our patients are inactive and the, and the trick is to get them from inactive passive to active psychological aspects um, are pretty um, standard anxiety depression anxious hostile you name it it happens and of course this has got social implications for our patients as well so what happens is with deconditioning over time performance goes down and this is completely wrong what we want is performance to go up so how do we get them out of that downward spiral with difficulty most of the time uh, but before you do that it's important to assess patients and this is done at the start of pain management programs this is done by physiotherapists occupational therapists depending on wh where they come from they should be assessing patients 
clinically as well as by self-report and the best way is a combination of both so the clinical assessment might uh, miss out aspects that self-report would pick up and vice versa so clinical testing things like putting the patients through a whole raft of physical activities that you measure time video um, and one of the example is a physical performance battery and that's what it is there they do chair stands they do some balancing tests and then they walk a particular length of um, a particular distance which is timed self-report of various other ones available sickness impact profile um, I think that's the Roland Morris Disability Index. Uh, yep, Disability Questionnaire. And there is the Tampa Scale for Kinesiophobia as well. So various self-reports that are focused on physical function. And then how do we get patients moving more? Um, you've got this in your, your handout with your five bars, physical activity. So you want to set goals. You want to have realistic goals. The goals need to be specific and based on function, uh, social goals, uh, work goals. Um, and the key is pacing, pacing activity. Um, and that is it, changing them from that downward spiral into that upward good spiral. And how are we going to reactivate them? And how are we going to recondition them? Well, four main ways we can increase their aerobic activity, aerobic capacity. Stretching is important, so aerobics, stretching, strength and endurance, and focusing on muscle coordination as well. I'm sure physiotherapists do more out there, but this is the basis of really reactivating, reconditioning patients. And each um, technique is tailored to that patient following assessment and um, an individualized um, understanding of the patient. But that's the principle. So pacing, what is it? This is a nice answer for you. It's moderate activity, rest, cycling. So it's moderate, not, not too much, not too little. It's activity followed by rest and that cycle of activity, rest. So they don't go out and buy, um, buy the groceries, come back, peel the potatoes, do the carrots, cut the meat, cook, serve, set the table, um, or cook, set the table, serve. They don't do that all in one foul swoop. It's go out, have a rest. Do the shopping, have a rest. Cut the carrots, have a rest. Prepare the meat, have a rest. Do the cooking, have a rest. Set the table, etc. So it's activity, rest, cycling. Regulates and structures their daily activity. So using goals, this is what I want to do today. This is how I'm going to do it. And the way that patients can pace up is with timing of activity. So I've got five minutes, that's all I'm going to do, and then I rest. Or they do particular quotas of things. So do the shopping, rest, etc. And also important with pacing and um, increasing their physical activity is part of cognitive behavioral therapy. So getting the patients to recognize painful, um, painful provoking things that they do. So this is changing their behavior again. So behavioral modification, so part of CBT. So it all just molds and all just melds in with one with the other. Physiotherapists are psychologists. Psychologists, probably not physiotherapists, but you get the drift. When you see patients, you're, you're reinforcing various things. You're, um, you're talking to them about exercise and sometimes even showing them various things to do. And that's the aim of pacing, increasing that performance as time goes on. In a sentence, if I had to, the most important thing for these patients and, and everyone is to keep them moving. That is, that is what it's all focused on. Not moving is bad, moving is good. Get your patients to move. That's the end of this topic.